Hey, Shalom everyone, this is your brother Danyala, aka the Copper Collab Original. Hopefully you guys can hear me well, because the volume looks very low, but it always shows as being low for some reason, I don't know why. Uh, but let me turn my volume on, because my volume was actually off. So, anyways, um, so, Shalom, you know, all praises to Most High Yahweh. You know, the Most High Yahweh is good to us, man. He really is. So all praises to the Most High Yahweh. Also, I want to, you know, give recognition to the Holy Spirit and also to Yahweh Shai. Um, just, you know, because of how the Most High uses them to help us. You know, so they definitely deserve recognition. Um, but yeah, so anyways, hope all you brothers and sisters are doing good today. I know that some people are having very rough times out here because times are very, very, very tough out here for, you know, some people. Some people, some of our people are going through it more than others, but that's always how life has been. But, you know, it's, it's, I, I truly believe that things are going to get worse before they get better for everyone, even including us, even though the true end game is going to be the best for us. You see what I'm saying? Um, it was funny because I made this video last night, but I'm doing it over again just because last night I was so incoherent because I was very, very tired. So I was like, you know, I'm just going to redo it tomorrow. But it's funny because one of the things I talked about in the video last night, uh, Big Judah made a video about it uh, yesterday. So now I'm going to kind of add in what he said a little bit or paraphrase a little bit what he was saying. Um, and, and you know give my opinion and of course the things I was talking about last night so basically this whole situation right uh, you know with the COVID-19 I honestly feel in my heart that there is not a disease that's running around excuse me wiping out hundreds of thousands of people if not millions of people. I don't feel like there's a disease running around killing people. Um, <clears throat> however, I do feel like they are doing something to try to make people sick. I do think that they're attempting to poison people genetically, to get in people's DNA, to get in their body, to cause them to exhibit these very violent sicknesses, you know what I'm saying? Um, that's why I feel like what's going on. I don't feel like it's working for them because <coughs> the Most High, um, he controls everything, and he controls their thoughts and the way they move and everything like that. Um, but not everything that we think is going to happen the way we think is going to happen is the way the most high functions the most high his like the scripture says his thoughts are not our thoughts you know what i'm saying uh and that his thoughts are much higher than our thoughts okay so we think that things should play out a certain way or we want things to play out a certain way but that doesn't mean that the most high is going to allow them to fully play out the way we want or think they will play out okay so the Most High is using these people to be wicked. He's using them to to basically place themselves in a body bag and bury themselves, okay? That is what the Most High is allowing these evil bastards to do. Of course, they have plans to... And I, I truly believe in NWO. I truly believe that the New World Order exists, or the so-called group called the Illuminati. I do believe that there are secret societies. I don't know if they're called the NWO for real. I don't know if they're... That's just a name that people have given them, the New World Order. <clears throat> but I don't know if the Illuminati is the name that they were given. But I do know for sure that there are secret societies <clears throat> and combo... <coughs> Sorry. Sorry about the coffee. Like, I'm kind of congested right now. But, um, you know, there are cabals that run this world. Because we know that the world has been given into what the hands of the wicked okay so we know that the devil is the prince we know that hashatan is the prince of this world you know he runs this right now well he's being used he's 
basically the king that has been placed on this world right now the little prince that has been placed on this world right now by the most high because we know the most high i agree with big judah the most high controls the left and the right and even though i think the disease is fake for the most part i feel like they're fear mongering and stuff like that we know that at the end of the day the most high controls all of them he wants everything to go the way they're going right now okay so there's no doubt about that but i don't believe that there's this disease running around you know what i'm saying um it's all fear tactics so much so that if even if you have like a simple cough you know or if you have pre pre-existing conditions or whatever now they're afraid of you because they think that you have COVID-19 or you have some type of disease now if you've been watching my video for years you've heard me cough over the years and the reason you know I'm not too sure exactly why but I know that I don't have um, I know that I don't have COVID-19 because I've been having this cough for a long time I never really got it checked out because it would come and go but um and usually when I get these coughs it's usually following some type of um like sinus infection. I will get this cough during the sinus infection. The sinus infection pains will go away, but the coughs will still linger and it will linger for months and months and months. You know, so I'm not the healthiest, you know what I'm saying? Uh I do definitely need to lose weight and stuff like that. And they usually said that sometimes, you know, with coughs, long standing coughs and stuff like that, you have underlying issues. Now <clears throat> with my family my mom also has the same cough we both had the same cough and in the past my mom has had tuberculosis she has also had asthma i have a lot of people in my family who are asthmatic uh, when i was a little kid the, a doctor i went to he actually said that i had asthma but the thing is is that i never got treated for asthma i think he gave me like one inhaler or something like that and then we changed doctors and I, I never had issues after that. I went on and played sports in high school, never had any issues. It wasn't until probably about like five years ago where I started to de develop like breathing issues. Well, actually when I was in high school, I started to develop breathing issues to where I couldn't hold my breath super long, stuff like that. And I still have family members to this day who still have asthma and some of them who used to have asthma and no longer have asthma. You know, so asthma runs in my family. I think we get it from my grandmother because my grandmother had asthma and it spread throughout her children and even her grandchildren. So with me, my cough that I have, it gets worse at night. And from what I read is that people who have asthma uh, or even tuberculosis, and the reason why I don't think it's tuberculosis or anything like that is because that usually comes with like spitting up blood, chest pain, stuff like that. The only thing that I get sometimes is like a little shortness of breath and then coughing, you know. So I believe that I'm asthmatic because everybody else in my family is asthmatic. Um, I wanted to go to the urgent care to get it checked out, but everybody's afraid of anybody who comes in here with a cough. They're like, oh, if you got a cough, you can't come here. I'm like, okay, all right. So I'm not dying or anything like that. It's just that some days it's better some days it gets worse so it's definitely not COVID-19 because with COVID-19 if you notice with COVID-19 they have a broad spectrum of what COVID what symptoms of COVID can be it is everything every damn thing if you if you got a little queasy stomach you got bubble guts COVID if you sneeze COVID if you cough COVID if you run a little fever it's COVID I mean literally if you look at the symptoms it covers everything and that's because they want to say that you have COVID and if you get treated, they want to say that you have COVID. And if you die, they want to say that you died from COVID. Because we know that they were telling doctors. They were literally telling doctors. Doctors were coming out, not just one, multiple doctors all over the country were coming out saying that they were telling them that if a patient died, they wrote them, they had to write them off as being a victim of COVID. So I don't believe that this whole COVID thing is real. I don't believe that it's real at all. Uh, I do believe that they're attempting and they're trying to put a real disease and sickness off on uh, people, but it's not working. You know, just like how they did the Tuskegee experiment. Remember how they were infecting our people with COVID and then they were making them go back to their wives and affect them, their wives with COVID? Because these, I mean, sorry, not COVID. They were affected. They were basically <clears throat> infecting these men with, um, I said COVID, um, Damn, I know the name of the, the syphilis. They were infecting these men with syphilis. 
And then they were trying to have these men go back to their wives and affect them with syphilis which can cause them to have they were hoping that they would make these black men sterile they were using these black men as an experiment but the thing is, is that these men did not become some of them became sterile i believe but maybe that was a different experiment i can't really remember but some they were hoping that they were passing this on to their partners and they weren't passing it on to their partners you know like they thought but still the whole thing is still there where they were testing these people Literally hundreds of black men they were testing this stuff on. I think they were even trying to test black. I think they were testing black women too. I'm not sure. But anyways, it didn't work. And they've been doing this type of stuff for years on us. Especially us black people. They've been trying to get us to, to die off for years. And the reason why they've been trying to get us to die off for years is because they say that we are only like 12 or 13 percent of the the population here in the united states and i do not believe that for a second you know let me tell you this ever since i was a child and this is no lie ever since i was a child i knew that there was more black people here than and than what they say and then i when i say black i'm i, I put quotes around that quote unquote black people okay I knew, I always knew that there was more black people here than what they said, because I was using my senses. I was just looking and I, you know, everywhere I would travel, because my dad used to travel a lot. We used to travel a lot when we were kids. I would see black people wherever we went, whether it was in the city, out in the suburbs, you know, out in these small little towns. You see black people. You see black people everywhere. Places you wouldn't expect to see black people, you see black people. And then they always try to make it seem like, well, majority, okay, yeah, majority of us white people aren't in the inner city, but where we are, are out in these small towns. Well, when you go to these small towns, you see how small the population is. The population is very small in these small towns. Very, very, very small in these small towns. They're acting like they got billions of or, or millions of white people in these small towns they don't these small towns are very very small i've driven around a lot you know i have a professional cdl that's where my profession lies you know and i've been around different parts of the country and i've seen these small little towns especially down south a lot of those small towns are filled with black people so down south not only do you have a bunch of black folk inside the inner city but you have a lot of black folks that own land and live on these small little towns you know some of these towns where you ain't got a neighbor until like another five miles you know what i'm saying so they they love lying to us you know their history european history is fraudulent for the most part you know it, it really is it's very fraudulent um you know and I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about that once I get to the main subject. Because I'm going to be talking about various subjects. One of them is the little COVID thing. One of them is what you're looking at right now. And I got a few little short subjects I'm going to talk about. But the main thing I'm going to talk about, um, it, it has to do with, you know, us owning our, our identity and who we are as a people. That's the main thing I'm going to talk about. And then I'm, of course, I'm going to talk about our history and their history. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, so I do, you know, I don't believe that COVID is a real thing. But the effects of COVID, I do believe that that is real. You know what I'm saying? No matter if it's real or not, the effects are real. And what I mean by that is look at the society. Look at this society. It is falling apart. It's not happening as fast as I wanted. I'm not the most high. The most high is perfect. He knows how to do everything. And I try to tell myself to be patient. You know what I'm saying? Because the most high knows what he's doing. There is no flaw in what he is doing. But I, I, I me being an imperfect human, I want it now. I want this stuff to be over now. I want to be in my rightful, our rightful place as a people. You know, with our God ruling over us. And us being obedient to our God. And, and having peace on this earth that's what i want but the most high our father has not lifted our punishment yet so we have to we have to endure 
because like the scripture says, he that endureth to the end shall be saved. So, you know, I'm trying to endure. You know, I'm sure all of us are, but it's just so hard. It's, it's so hard seeing our people go through this stuff. And I'm not talking about Americans. I'm talking about my people. Because there's a lot of our people who are suffering through this too. You know, whether they're wicked, wicked or not, it, it's tough. It's tough. It's tough seeing homeless people, especially, you know, homeless children out here begging for money and stuff you know um and, yeah I, it was funny because i was telling my wife this yesterday and i told her this like a few months ago because i had read something online or i had made a post online because when i when i was growing up as a kid you know i went i had issues there was times where i was homeless and stuff me and my mom and uh, her kids we were homeless and growing up I remember my dad and my grandfather, both of them, <clears throat> excuse me, being very, very cold towards homeless people. And my, my, my grandfather, he always had this mentality of, if you're homeless, you deserve, you must have done something to become homeless. That's the mentality that my grandfather had. He had no mercy for homeless people because he felt like they're the one. They're the reason why they're in that situation. I've I've never felt like that because I've always been a compassionate person. My father, he would be cold towards homeless people too. He wouldn't give money towards homeless people at all. His excuse was, "Hey, I only give homeless. I only give money to my people, my homeless people." Right? That's what he used to tell us when he used to see the white homeless people. I'm like, "Okay, that's cool. That's cool. No problem with that." But then when he would come towards a homeless brother, a homeless quote unquote black person, you know what his excuse would be? Why he didn't give them anything? Was well, because they're not the brethren. They're not brethren. Okay? And he will quote the book of Matthew where, you know, Yahweh um, I believe his sibling came to him and was saying, you know, hey, your, your mother wants you. Your mother wants you. Uh, and then he's like, well, who is my mother? Who is my father? Those who keep the will of the most high. So he was putting his brethren first because I believe he was in the middle of teaching or, yeah, he was like in the middle of a sermon or something. And he was like, huh, heck, no, no, I'm not putting them, I'm not putting my brethren on hold simply for someone who was called my mother. Even though Mary was part of the flock too, um, you know, he felt that that was more important and you know he's right so of course you're you oh you, you have different levels you put your brethren first those who keep the faith of the most high you put them first then you put your people second the ones who don't the ones who don't keep the laws yes you value them more than you value strangers okay but the thing is is that even still even when they are not in the flock meaning that they're not in the faith we're still supposed to take care of them you don't see nothing in scripture saying well if they're wicked you do not have to keep my laws with them you don't see anything like that in scripture the most high told us how we're supposed to live we're supposed to show charity you know what i'm saying we're supposed to show that you know yes yeah how wish i did heal people who were who humbled down to them but he also taught them that they're supposed to give alms to their people. That's another thing that the Most High said that we're supposed to do. That's written in law that we're supposed to give alms. And, you know, the book of James is very good on giving alms. So dealing with work and faith. That if you do not put in the work, you don't have faith. And if you don't have faith, you don't put in the work. Okay? And it's very clear. So read the book of James. I believe is James 5 I believe it is I'm not sure but in the book of James you can just google it and you'll find it but in the book of James it tells you perfectly how to give alms you know what I'm saying and I don't want to get too far into that but you can look in the book of James about that you know so we're supposed to give alms to our people and there's no excuses why we shouldn't we shouldn't be like oh well he must have done something to get there you don't know that man's story you don't know that woman's story. That's why when our people ask for money, I try to do my best to give them money. 
you know, sometimes I may not have money on me. Sometimes I can go and get the money, you know, and if I have money on me, I will give it to them, you know. Uh, one time I had to correct my friend because he was like, uh, yeah, no, I'll give him. He, made, he actually made a post on Facebook saying, yeah, I, I don't give, uh, I don't give uh, homeless dudes money because they may go and use it on beer and blah, 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 blah. And I had to correct him. Because in scripture, uh, I can't remember where it is exactly, but you you can quote me on this. I I mean you can literally quote me on this. I I know for sure that it's in scripture because I showed my friend, show many others, that even if a brother is a wino, you still give him that money, because scripture says that because he is miserable, and that he uh, basically I'm paraphrasing here it says he's miserable, and that his 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 demise he sees that his demise is near something like that that you should you're supposed to let him drink so that he can have a peace of mind basically you know i'm gonna pull the script up for you guys real quick so you won't think that i'm like bs because that paraphrase is pretty rough so i'm gonna let me pull it up for you guys okay so i'm back it's right here in proverbs uh 31 and 6 okay now, at first it said, well, you can read all this on your own, everything that's in five and up. But anyway, so it says, oh, I'm not going my spray. It says, give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish, okay? So to him that is ready to perish, okay? And wine unto those heavy of hearts. So it's two different people here. Give wine to him that is ready to perish. So someone who is dying. Say if someone is dying of some type of debilitating disease or a guy who is, you know, dying of, you know, maybe he got wounded in, in battle and he's on the battlefield and they're like trying to nurse him, but he's going to die. You know, you're supposed to give a strong drink to him. And then also you're supposed to um, give wine to those that are heavy of heart. Okay. So people who are going through things. You know, like these homeless brothers, okay? Yeah, so, right here, you go down to verse 7, it says, Let him drink and forget his poverty. So, we're talking about people who are poor or homeless, people who are miserable, heavy at heart. Some of them may even be ready to perish. Like a lot of these brothers out here, they be ready to perish. These brothers out here on the street, they be on their last limbs. You know what I'm saying? Starving to death dying due to diseases and exposure stuff like that you know so i'm gonna read it over again it says give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish and wine unto those that are heavy of heart i mean uh so let me read that again i messed up it says give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish and wine unto those that be of heavy hearts let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his his misery no more okay so this wine is to help people get through tough times so if you think that it, you you don't need to give a brother a dime a dollar or whatever help just because you think he's going to use it on something that you don't agree with you're not supposed to do that you're just if you think that he's going to buy beer with that give it to him let him forget his miseries okay Give that brother some some little bit of peace. And I showed this to my friend because I was like, brother, the way you're thinking is wrong. You're not supposed to be thinking like that. You know? So, I know I went off on a little tangent and stuff. But still, you know, it's tough out here for our people. It, I mean, it really is. And I, I always try to give alms when I can. Uh, because that's what we're supposed to do as a people. We're supposed to care about our people. We're supposed to be selfless not selfish okay we're supposed to be selfless and a lot of our people aren't selfless at all they're very selfish you know when you look at um the whole kevin hart thing kevin hart recently has come out to defend um what is her name ellen degeneres okay he came out and defended this this homosexual woman why because she's powerful now a lot of people are upset right now because she defended he defended ellen but he didn't defend nick cannon outwardly 
okay, openly, publicly, because Kevin claims that he, def you know, he shows support towards Nick Cannon, but he said that he called him up on the phone and all this stuff. He was like, we don't know that he's doing that type of stuff. Okay, well, see, the thing is, is that he outwardly showed his support towards Ellen, but he did not outwardly, publicly show his support towards Nick Cannon. That's a problem. And I think the reason why he did it for Ellen was because Ellen, I, I believe she did um, defend him when he had allegations against him. But also because she's powerful. She is a millionaire. She's white. She's gay. So that's a lot of power in his realm of where he works. Kevin works in Hollywood. And those people, the, his paymasters, they control him for the most part. They control him. They control, they can, they can shut him down real quick if they wanted to. So, of course, he's going to suck up to the people who run Hollywood. Holly Weird is ran by homosexuals, okay? And this is why he's helping her. Because he, he knows that if he helps her out, she's going to be a very powerful ally to have in the future. But see, what he doesn't know that he's doing, he's putting a, a target on his back. And the reason why he's not outwardly defending Nick Cannon is because he doesn't see the value in Nick Cannon. And that's how a lot of our people are. We don't see the value in each other. We want to tear each other down. We have a crab and barrel mentality. You know, we, we're just... We're, we just don't have enough faith in each other because trust and believe if all the black people, if the most high made it possible that all, all of us so-called black Americans said, forget this. And we took our power back. Nothing could stop us. Nothing can, could stop us at all. And these white people know it. That's what I was saying earlier, you know, with the population, I, I truly believe there's way more of us here than what they say, because they're afraid for some reason they've been trying to get rid of us for a very very long time they've been trying to get our numbers down for a very very long time remember this is our lands the america is our land so of course we're not going to be a minority over here we're not especially the way us so-called black americans repopulate you mean to tell me that we've been here for supposedly for about 400 some years right supposedly and we fucking procreate like rabbits and we're still only 13%. And we white people have always had a very slow birth rate. No, we've been here for thousands of years. We've been here for thousands of years. We procreate way faster than white people do. We, I mean, and, and, and it shows too, because I remember in the early 1900s, you know, they were actually, uh, they were actually trying to get whites to have more kids here. Uh, this was during the Great Depression or slightly after the Great Depression. No, it was during the Great Depression where they were trying to get the population of whites to rise here. They were going to give like a large sum of money to whoever won, whoever had the most kids, they were given a large sum of money to. And this was to promote white people to have more children. And I'm not sure if it worked or what, but they did bump up the numbers. You have to remember also at this time too, they were sending over a lot of Europeans. Ever since like the early, eight, I mean, sorry, late 1800s, they were shipping over a lot of white people over here to the United States. Okay? And that happened all the way up until like the 1960s that they were shipping a lot of these white people who have all these Ellis Island stories over here to the United States. You know, Karimio has shared a lot of good videos, very good videos, talking about these books written back in 1800s, early 1900s, stuff like that, talking about how a lot of these Europeans that were coming over as slaves and in the book called White Cargo and all this stuff, those slaves weren't really white. <laughs> they were really black people. But, and, and remember, the book White Cargo, that book was written only like, I think like 10 to 15 years ago or 20 years ago, something like that. But these other books were written on, over 100 years ago, 
Okay, so I'm gonna believe the books that was written over a hundred years ago that were when the people were actually seeing that was happening. These people were first hand writers, not second hand like the book White Cargo and they were white and they were slaves. No. They, the, the book they were white and they were slaves simply took the word European and was like, Oh, that must mean white people, so all of them were white. No, that's bullshit. When you go to the actual first hand sources that were written by these people, and some of them were even secondhand sources, but they were much older than these books that you get today. They had they had access to the first-hand sources and stuff like that. These records and stuff that they like to hide. Okay, a lot of those Europeans that were coming over since the beginning of co the colonial era, whether it was Spain, Portugal, or the UK, or even the Dutch, a lot of them were swarthy, which means black. They were being described as black, swarthy, tawny, which is a dark reddish brown. Yes, these people were being described as that. <laughs> and it was so bad that even the founding fathers were complaining about that. Okay? And I'm going to talk a little bit. I may talk a little bit about this a little bit more later on. But they were complaining about all the swarthy people, not just only coming over to the United States, but that were already over here. And that lived in most of the world okay so yeah their population is much lower much lower and I believe that these people came into power during the Revolutionary War I believe that's when white power was established around the world during the Revolutionary War very pivotal time man. really very pivotal so anyways um I'm gonna talk about this right here okay well you know before i get into that i do want to go back and you know talk about the disease i don't think that is real i do believe that we are getting closer and closer towards the end um did you watch the video where there was this woman she was talking about um this you know how the i guess the new world order they're done with this this country and stuff i don't think that she was really talking about the lands I think that they, she was just talking about the people in this society that they're trying they're going to destroy it and I agree I do believe that they're they're going to destroy this land I mean not this land but the people this society because really what I see that you're doing because when you look at this there's this meme that talks about how um, people were so I can show you right here. I'm gonna show you real quick uh, where is it where is it where is it Maybe it's this one. Yep, here it is. So it says, y'all still think Republican and Democrats care about y'all? Uh, when they can do the same thing as other countries. Okay, I guess. Uh, when America's supposed to be the wealthiest and greatest country, right? Okay, so, <coughs> excuse me. It's showing the monthly allowances that other countries are giving their citizens while the United States gave $1,200 to last for 10 weeks, okay? See, the reason why all these other countries are being paid out and being taken care of by the government is because they're already in line with the New World Order, okay? All these countries don't have the same liberties that this country does, you know, when it comes to their rights and all that stuff. They lack a lot of them. You know, just a few months ago, Canada had their guns taken. Canadians have their guns taken. You can't do that here in the United States, at least not yet. So what you gotta do, you gotta break this country down to its bare minimum to where people are desperate and they will get in line to where you can take them like, okay, now we, we got rid of all your rights because as we seen before, what was in the old system didn't work. This is why we're here where we're at right now. It didn't work, so now we need to build up a new system. You guys have to take vaccines to make sure that you're all healthy. People, when you get them, <coughs> when you, <coughs> you get to, to the point of desperation, they're going to be so desperate. They're going to be like, sure, I'll take a vaccine. Does that mean I get to eat? Does that mean I get to have a place to live? Does that mean I get to live a, a good life? Sure, you could take my guns. Does that mean I get to eat now? Okay, that means I get to come back to society? Okay. So that's what they're doing. That's why I truly feel like they're doing right now. They're breaking down America just to build it back up and put it in line with everybody else. It's like what a pimp does to a hoe. It's like what they do in the military to a new recruit. They break you down and build you up. That's what they do. You know what I'm saying? 
and of course that's their plan but will their plan fully come to fruition who knows i do believe that this country is going to be destroyed i do believe that they're going to get this country to the point to where it's going to get destroyed and that's because it's the most high's will the most high prophesied it in the bible you know what i'm saying he had prophets prophesying this in the bible so this spiritual babylon and mind you spiritual babylon is part of all these all these countries are part of spiritual babylon too but this is the head of the spiritual babylon or this is the firstborn child of spiritual babylon so this place needs to be destroyed also and it's been predict it's been predicted in the bible to be destroyed it's been prophesied in the bible to be destroyed okay so it's going to happen but these people rule in the world no <laughs> that's not going to happen their time is up and they know it so anyways i'm gonna go back to this meme <laughs> I will go back to this now as you guys y'all probably already read it by now but I just want to say for all you people out there who think that dreadlocks are locks no that's not true okay now this came from a book that I was reading um, it's called like the America's the most accurate description blah 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 it has a very very long title but this came from a book from 1600s so the English that you're reading is old English and the words look the letters look a little weird so anyways, it says, they wear their hair long, which braided hung on the left side. Yes, I know that that S looks like an F, but that's an S. Hung on the left side of their heads down to their hips, tied at the end uh, with two knots, okay? But the nobility had two such locks, okay? So they were telling you, they were describing to you that the citizens, the, the, the common citizen, of this tribe this american tribe right had one braid that hang on the left side of their head all the way down to the hips <coughs> sorry while the nobility had two such locks two braids they had two braids that hung on the left side of their head okay so yeah i just wanted to say that real quick that locks are not dreadlocks they're braids and when you think about it it makes sense uh, when you think about how white people depict locks of course they get everything wrong these people always appropriate and not making sense about their appropriation and their lies but you know white people they always like to say oh she has locks all the way down to her back no she does not she just has hair all the way down to her back uh, just like with Goldilocks they show Goldilocks you never see Goldilocks with braids you know but locks are braids and it makes sense because you like you're locking the hair you're locking it and you're unlocking it okay unlike with dreadlocks for the most part most people don't get their dreadlocks unlocked yes you can lock them into place but most people don't get them unlocked they're seen as a permanent hairstyle even though you can get them taken out it's a very long very tedious process but it is possible but the locks that the bible is talking about because remember the bible was written around this time this book was written in 1600s just like the bible when they talk about samson it's talking about seven braids it's not talking about seven dreadlocks okay so the reason how i came to the main subject tonight was because or today is because of me looking for samson's locks okay very very funny stuff and this is the book that i got it from anyways if you guys were wondering okay so, Samson. <laughs> so this was a an article that was published published back in 2013, and it reads. Okay, one second. Okay, so I'm bad guy. Sorry about that. <coughs> my um. <laughs> My wife, she had came up here, so I stopped the audio because I thought that she was going to interrupt me. Um, but anyway, so I'm back. Uh, I had to take care of some things first. Uh, so now I'm going to try to finish out this video, then I'll finish some of the subjects I was going to talk about. So anyways, before I get over here, I actually forgot what the hell I was talking about because it was such, such a long time ago. It was actually about like an hour ago, hour, hour and a half. So anyways, before I get to this I do want to talk about um, Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> now, this guy, Ryan Reynolds, 
Everybody know who he who he is. He's an actor. He's played in movies such as Green Lantern. He was the original Green Lantern in the DC uh, universe when it came to the movies. He was the first one who played Green Lantern. Mind you, at that time, uh, the Green Lantern in the comics and also in the, the Justice League TV series was a black guy. <laughs> you know, it's like ah, nah, nah. We gotta gotta reestablish ourselves. <laughs> Because mind you, Green Lantern is a very powerful character. Not the strongest, but he's one of the most... Well, he's one of the top Justice League uh, characters. So anyways... Um, and it's funny because one of the, the only characters that doesn't have a power of himself, right? He's very powerful, but the power isn't from him. It's from the damn ring. They gave that to a black person. <laughs> Instead of giving that role to... You know, to a white guy. You know, when it came to the, the TV series, they could have easily had a white guy playing that character, and they could have made Superman a black man, but they didn't want to do that. <laughs> they they'll never do that. They will never make Superman into a black guy. But anyways, um, so Ryan Reynolds recently got married, and people are upset with him because he got married at a former slave plantation. Now, I'm not sure if everybody is upset about that because I know that I'm not upset about that. Um, white people, they get married at plantations all the time. It's nothing new um, because, you know, they outfit a lot of these old plantations to make them look very nice and so that people can have events there. And it costs a lot of money you know, because it's a, very, a lot of these plantations are very big properties and they outfit them very well to make them look very nice. So, this is nothing new. White people have been doing this for generations. Getting married at plantations. It's, it's really nothing new. Some people are offended because he got married at a plantation. And to those people, I say that you're being absolutely ridiculous. Um, because white people are going to do what they want to do. And I think the reason why some black people are upset with him is because they believed in him. <laughs> to them, they were kind of like a, a idol in a way. They looked up to him. They're like, yeah, he cares about us. I don't know why they would think that, but there's literally black people out here saying that Ryan Reynolds have done things, or saying that Ryan, Ryan Reynolds... Uh, is down for black people. <laughs> I'm like, what do you, where do you get this from? Where do you get that Ryan Reynolds is down for black people? He has not supported black people as a whole. He hasn't done anything for us yet. If you go to the Breakfast Club um, video that they did on Ryan Reynolds, you will see Negroes down in the comment section defending him, saying that he has done things for black people. And... and kind of like paraphrasing but they were like uh yeah he's down with us if he was the only black person i mean if he was the only white person in the room for black people he'd be the white guy cracking himself and i'm like what so that makes him cool and that makes him down just because you like his movies <laughs> i swear white black people we love to i'm not saying that he does that he stabbed us in the back but black people as a whole they love being stabbed in the back by the enemy and then when somebody brings attention to you being stabbed in your back, black people be like, hey, that hurt my feelings. And then a white guy apologize, or white society apologize to black society. And then black society accepts that apology. That's all, nothing more. You should, I mean, really black society should say, hey, don't ever do that again or I will kill you or destroy you or they should respond with destroying that person that's trying to destroy them but black society doesn't do that so black society gets the apology that's all apology does nothing for anyone but black society accepts the apology and then continues to allow that same white society to stab them in the back over and over and over again that's how black society is so all Ryan Reynolds have to do is apologize, which is what he did, because somebody brought it up, 
And then Negroes are like, oh, he apologizes, all right? He probably didn't know. The Breakfast Club, they said that he didn't know <laughs> the place was a plantation. And I'm like, are you kidding me? As you can see to the right, the place is called Boone Hall Plantation and Gardens. How in the hell did he not know that? When people get married, they know the name of the venues in which they get married. How in the hell did this guy not know the name of this place? I mean, it's right there in the name that said Plantation. So how in the hell did you not know that? See, that's why I'm even mentioning this. Because I think that some people are not upset because they think it's racist or it's not being racist at all. Some people like me are upset because it's an insult to our intelligence. He's trying to hit his shitty excuse is, you know, ridden with uh, lies. You know what I'm saying? Like, how in the hell did you not, like, I'm just, I'm really curious how he did not know that that was a plantation. Are, are you kidding me? And that's the shit I don't like. I don't like when people lie to me. I don't like when people insult my intelligence and think I'm stupid. <laughs> because that's what he thinks we are. He thinks we're stupid. You really think that you're going to have me believe that you didn't know that this, was, this place was a plantation when plantation is in its name? Come on, guys. Stop playing with us. You know. Other than that, everything else is insignificant. I just hate when people try to play on our intelligence. And a lot of people fall for it. A lot of people are like, yeah, he didn't know. He said he didn't know, so he didn't know. Come on. It's in the fucking name. <laughs> I know that, you know, rich people have assistants that set stuff up for them. But he at least had to be like, oh, yeah, um, that place, hmm, Boone's Hall Plantation. Let me see the pictures. Okay, yeah, that's nice. Let's do it. He had to have some type of input in it. He had to have known the name. He had to have seen the place before having his wedding there. So, come on. Stop playing us like we're stupid. Anyways. So, um, another <coughs> subject I want to talk about is um, the executioners. Okay? Now, the executioners, there's a there's this uh, Hispanic guy, I forget his name, uh, he came out recently and he was talking about the LA gang called the Executioners, okay? So it says, Los Angeles deputy says, colleagues are part of a violent gang, okay? The allegations against the Compton deputies follow accusations of other gangs in the department called the Spartans, okay? So it's not just the Executioners, it's called the Spartans, the regulators, Grim Reapers, Banditos, okay? Which is Spanish for bandits. That also share tattoos and history of violence uh, to time set, okay? Uh, now, a loss, okay, a violent gang of Los Angeles County Sheriff's deputies who call themselves the executioners control a, uh, sorry, a patrol station in Compton through force, threats, uh, work slowdowns and act of revenge against those who speak out. A deputy um, alleges in a legal claim. So this is a dude's name. His name is like Ostroberto, uh, Ostroberto Gonzalez, a former Marine and sheriff deputy since 2007. Said in a notice of a claim ahead of a planned lawsuit that the gang retaliated against him for for months after he anonymously reported a fellow, uh, sorry, a fellow deputy for allegedly assaulting a co-worker in February to further the reputation of his gang, of the gang. Uh, Gonzalez later received a text message with a photo of graffiti at the station. He said, the graffiti allegedly said, art is a rat. Okay, so this dude, art, I don't want to say his full name because I'm going to mess it up. It's like Oscar Roberto or whatever. He <coughs> outed his fellow deputies for being part of this gang because they assaulted another deputy for their gang. Okay? 
And now this guy's afraid for his life because he basically snitched on these other guys. Now, Art, he is not part of this gang, but he does know that ex they exist. And you know, I'm wondering, I'm wondering, did he know about it before this assault took place? Because I'm pretty sure he did. I'm pretty sure that he probably knew about it beforehand, but he just probably had enough of it once when he saw another deputy get assaulted by these these racist race soldiers. And uh, I'm gonna play a video. <coughs> Sorry, I'm gonna play a video for you guys. Okay, so here's the video. I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. This investigation, an alleged gang of sheriff's deputies within the LA County Sheriff's Department known as the Executioners. Their alleged tattoo depicts a skeleton in flames, an AK-47, and a Nazi-style helmet. Miriam Hernandez has a closer look at the pressure mounting on the department to open their files on any groups like this. From inside the Compton Sheriff Station, a deputy's claim filed with the county about an aggressive band of whose cohorts elect. Now, mind you, one of the people that he, I guess, well, one of the people who came out as being a gang member, this guy was Hispanic. And if you look around here, you will see people, even though they're not showing their face, you can see people of brown skin. So it's not just only white people who are in these gangs, these, these white supremacist gangs. They have Hispanic people in here too. And I know that, you know, people are going to get upset when they hear me say this, but yes, a lot of these white gangs, they initiate Hispanics into these gangs. They also initiate Asians into these gangs also. They see them as being honor honorary white supremacists temporary honorary white supremacists because we know how these these white people are they like to use you as an ally and then when they're done with you they'll get rid of you too we've seen that they did this to our ancestors over here in the americas you know like the nary gansett for example and and similar tribes who aligned with the enemy and then they killed our people, they killed off other tribes, and then after that, the white people's like, okay, well, you're not getting your land back, we're gonna put you over here in this little, this little space, we're gonna call it a, um, we're gonna call it a reservation, which is really just a concentration camp, we're gonna put you here, and you be happy with that while we take over the rest of your land, and we, we rape your women and all this other stuff. So yeah, most of these dudes, if you look at it, most of these guys, they're Hispanic. And as you will see, people who are part of these gangs are going to be Hispanic guys. So what I'm saying is so-called black people, you have to vet everyone, including black people. But you have to be careful when you're out here on these streets. You know, you have to be careful of everyone, to be honest. You know, you can't even trust black people also. But, you know, when a Hispanic cop pulls you over... Don't think that you're good because he's a, he's not white. I've seen many videos online where black people get pulled over by racist Hispanic cops. And I'm sure a lot of them belong to a lot of these, these racist brotherhoods, these racist little orders that they have in the police force. So you can't trust, you know, I know you got people out there, you know, like Fremio, who obviously is down. He shows his true colors, his intentions and stuff. But there's other Hispanics out here who may even be Israelites who don't know that they're Israelites, but they see the advantage of aligning with white people. You know, so they don't value black people and some of them don't even value their own people. You know what I'm saying? Because these racist Hispanic cops, they're not only killing black people, they're also killing Hispanic people too. You know, so I'm just saying you got to be careful. You know, because it's not just only white cops out here killing people. You got it, uh, killing us. You also got, you know, mostly white cops killing us. But you also have Hispanic cops killing us because they're racist. And you also have racist Asian cops. And then you even have black cops who are what my, my dad would call homo racist. They don't, they don't like their own race. And they would do anything to prove themselves to so-called white people. You know, so you have to be careful out here no matter what. But, you know, like I said, as you can see, even though you can't see their face, you can see that these guys are Hispanic. 
Uh, let me go through here. Okay, so I'm going to continue playing the video for you guys. Allegedly in control. According to the claim, members are branded with a sinister logo. Which is a uh, skeleton wearing a Nazi helmet uh, with an AK-47 laughing. And go by a sinister name, the Executioners, which according to the claim does not allow African American or female members. See, so they don't allow African Americans <coughs> at all. They allow everybody else. Like I said, everybody else is honorary white to them. You know, they probably won't marry you or let their kids marry you or whatever. But they will let them join their game. So if you're Hispanic, they may not marry you, let your kid marry their kid. But they will allow you to be in their game. Why? Because these Caucasian people, they're opportunists. And they know how to play different groups of people against each other. You know, like I said before, like I was telling my wife, our numbers here in the United States are much higher than what they're saying. So much so that they allow everybody else to join them against us. We have never done anything to white people for them to hate us as much as they do. That's not why they allow everybody else to join their gangs except for us. Even the neo-Nazis allow Asian and Hispanic people to join their gangs. Okay? So that shows you how desperate they are for numbers. So what that is telling me, that's confirming what I already believe. That there is way more black people here in the United States than what they say. And there may even be way more of us than there are of them here. Okay? Because they're afraid for some reason. They've been trying to wipe us out with with all these different vaccines and drugs and diseases for ever since they came over here, okay? They've been trying to wipe us out. If we're only 12% of the, or 13% of the, the, the country's population, why are we such a big threat to you guys? Why do you want to keep killing us? Why do y'all use your police tactics? Why do y'all use drugs, uh, bad food, diseases, you know, man-made diseases? Why do y'all use all this stuff to try to kill us and to lock us up if we're only like 13% of the, the country's population? It makes no sense. The reason why is because we're much bigger. We are more populated here than you guys put on. And we're not falling for anymore. I'm not the only one who thinks this either. So, anyways, you can't trust these people, man. You, can, you cannot, uh, this is why I don't trust cops at all, you know, and you have to be careful because a lot of these cops, they're part of Masonic uh, Brotherhood societies, you know, they, they, I mean, it's, it's everywhere, really, it is, it's everywhere, these Masonic orders, so you have to watch out, but this guy, you know, salutes to this dude because he did the right thing, he did the right thing by outing what's going on right now he's afraid for his life he said that he's he's afraid for his life because he feel like they're they're going to do something to him because they're targeting him right now and i completely understand why because remember this was probably about like six seven years ago maybe even eight years ago where chris dorner went through the same situation went through the same situation in la Chris Dorner, you know, rest in peace to that brother, man. I know that the Most High is going to get his vengeance for that brother. I hope that that brother gets to be revived, resurrected, so that he can get vengeance for himself. You know, I don't know how that brother's personal life was, but I really hope that the Most High has mercy on his soul. And I know that the Most High is going to get vengeance for him. There's no question for that. But remember the brother he was talking about how with LAPD same body of government as these people LAPD was basically targeting black people and performing police brutality on black people in large numbers and he wasn't having it he was he reported it to the higher-ups the higher-ups didn't do anything about it, and I believe they fired him. They fired him for snitching, for doing the right thing. They fired him for doing the right thing, so he was upset, 
and since they didn't give him his job back, he went on a shooting spree. And he killed four people. He injured several other people. Um, uh, he killed the police. I think it was either a police captain of the precinct or either the police chief's daughter. I don't know. Killed both of them, I believe. Or killed the daughter and injured the father. And he killed a few other people. And then he went to Big Bear. He went to a cabin in Big Bear County, I believe it's called, or Big Bear Valley. And they found him over there. They sent the robot in there and they killed him. They burnt, they bombed the place. And they sent the robot in there and killed him. So, you know, rest in peace to that brother. I really wish he went about it a different way. I wish he went about it a smarter way. Um, I wish that he waited and found other brothers who would be down with him to do it on a larger scale. That's why I wish he did. You know, people don't need to be afraid to be martyrs, and I do understand that the Most High will get vengeance for us. But the Most High allows everything to happen for a reason, you know. So when brothers go out here and get vengeance and do stuff like that, the Most High allow that to happen, you know. But the reason why I brought up Chris Dorner is because this was the same thing he was talking about. This was the same thing Chris Dorner died about. And that's why this man right here is afraid for his life because he believes that his life is in danger because he's seen what happened to Chris Dorner. You know, and it's sad because both of them come from the same background. Him and Chris Dorner were both in the military before joining the police force. You know, so anyways, I'm just going to skim through this video. But this is the guy right here who blew the whistle. So as we seen, they posted on the the box that he was a rat. Um, okay, so this is the chief, the police, the, the the sheriff himself, the sheriff, not a deputy, but the sheriff. For prospects, rumblings reaching the sheriff. Well, first of all, there is no gang of any deputies running any station right now. This matter has already been receiving very swift administrative action. We've already taken positive steps. Pressure for. Do you see how he's see how he's looking? See, you could look at his face and tell that he's being dishonest and disingenuous. Just look at his face. He's not even looking at the camera. He can't even hold his eyes to the camera for two seconds. He's looking down. He's like kind of like huffing and rolling his eyes. Are inked executioners or prospects? Rumblings reaching the sheriff. Well, first of all, there is no gang of any deputies running any station right now. So this matter has already contact. been receiving very swift administrative action. We've already taken... See, he looks annoyed. He's not looking at the camera. Positive steps. Pressure for... You know, all they have to do is just, you know, if they really cared, because I believe the people who are doing an investigation, they don't care. And it's so funny because the people who do these investigations, these internal investigations, are usually part of the same department that they're... <coughs> <clears throat> they're investigating you can't have the police invest investigate the police because they're just gonna hide stuff they're not going to bring out the truth I believe that you should have an outside entity like a, a group of citizens with lawyers investigating these organizations these government organizations that's why I believe they should do to make it fair you can't have it's it's like you investigating yourself like somebody somebody accused you of a crime you're like hold up you can't we can't do anything until i investigate the crime and find out if i'm guilty or not of course you're, if you're guilty of course you're not going to bring out that information because you know bad things are going to happen you know but yeah i mean it's just absolutely ridiculous man but yeah man it's this guy and as you can see Look at this guy's last name, Villanueva. That's a Hispanic last name. Now, this guy, he, his dad is probably a sellout Hispanic guy. His dad probably got off a white woman because this dude looks very white. But as you can see, he is a Hispanic. He would be classified as a Hispanic, a white Hispanic. Uh, let me see if I can go through and find the other guy who was, yeah, so. Okay, this cop right here. So bring it out. Emerged in the wrongful death shooting case of Dante Taylor. Compton recently the armored bit. SUV of rap Compton, a flashpoint for high profile crimes. Recently the armored SUV of rapper YG in the middle of a shootout. 
and an 18-year-old security guard, Andres Guardado, chased by two Compton deputies, shot five times in the back. Evidence of the secret deputy pack emerged in the wrongful death shooting case of Dante Taylor, Compton. So as you can see, these guys are out here just killing black people and Hispanic people. And it's funny because when you read uh, more into that article and other articles, they talk about how these guys broker deals with whoever to increase arrests of innocent people and how they're targeting black people and Hispanic people. It's crazy. Deputy Samuel Adama forced to reveal his tattoo, saying that about... Samuel Adama. That's a Hispanic name. This is a Hispanic man right here who's part of this game. So you even have sellouts within the Hispanics who are killing their own people. Trust and believe when you look at the stats, they're killing more black people than they are Hispanic. But they're still even killing their own people. So you can't trust these people, man. You can't trust these guys. You have to vet everyone. Everyone who you want to let in your circle, vet. And everyone who is not in your circle, be weary of them. Be very weary of them. You know, like the scripture says, walk circumspectively. Which means that you are always got your head on the swivel. But anyway, so to the main subject of this video, and that's dealing with Samson's locks, okay? So I started on this before I got interrupted. I believe I started on this before I got interrupted, but then I um, decided to go back. Now, the reason why I want to talk about Samson's locks is in, in this, the, the, um, the little passage that I showed you from the book earlier is what led me here because I went to Google and typed in Samson's, sorry, Samson's seven locks and I came across this article. And you know, it's just so funny because these white people, as you can read right here, it says, Samson wasn't black, but I'm glad the actor was. Okay, first of all, where's your proof that Samson wasn't black? Because I read this whole article and they said not one thing proven that Samson wasn't black. They didn't say what color he was, but they said that he definitely was not black. And I don't get that. You know, it's the same thing with this whole anti-Semitism thing that's going on right now, trying to make it seem like black people, so-called African-Americans, are anti-Semitic, sorry, anti-Semitic. And like the one brother said who plays football, just like Nick Cannon said, we are not anti-Semitic at all. We're Shemites. We descend from Jacob. We descend from Israel, Shemitic people. The original Shemitic people were all quote-unquote black. So we're not anti-Semitic at all. Some of those fake Jews over there who call themselves Semitic aren't even Semitic. <laughs> but I just think it's so funny how they in the media will say, hey, you're anti-Semitic or, you know, the Israelites were not black, but they don't prove it. Prove that we're anti-Semitic. Prove that the Israelites weren't black. But see, the reason why they don't do that is because they can't. They can't prove that the Israelites weren't black when Scripture tells you otherwise. Scripture tells you that the Israelites were black. Scripture tells you that so-called Jesus was black. Scripture tells you that so-called the Most High God has hair like a black person. So, how y'all gonna sit there and fix your mouth to say something so stupid that Samson wasn't black, but I'm glad the actor was? I mean, this article is ridiculous. It really is ridiculous, man. But white people, they get offended about everything. Everything. And see, the thing is, is that they don't like black people to be great. Quote, unquote, black people. And like I said before, I put quotes. Every time when I say black, put quotes around it because... I know that we're not black, okay? But they get offended whenever black people 
put themselves in the place of greatness. They they always get upset about that. Whenever they show a, a black person of stature, they flip their fucking lids. Remember back when uh, Star Wars, um, I forget what the, the, the one was called, the first one was called that came out recently. Because remember how they started up the Star Wars series about five years ago, they started it back up and they had uh, the black guy, the African dude playing as Ren and white people lost their shit. <laughs> Even though Ren is just a psychic and his role is just a throwaway role, they flipped their lids, man. And they was like, how could you do this? You're whitewashing Star Wars. As if black people had never been in the Star Wars universe. See, that's the thing. White people like to think themselves as gods. And they're not. This is why they always do. This is why they flip. Okay, you want me to tell you why they flip their lids when black people have roles of great stature in these movies? The reason why they flip their shit is because that's the only way they can make themselves seem great through their movies because they're not great when it comes to reality they're not excellent human beings this is why superman is white this is why all the most powerful characters that you can think of in movies comic books cartoons this is why they're all white this is why god is depicted as white because anything that is real when we go off of real history, when we go off of reality, white people aren't great at all. Physically and mentally, they're not as great as we are. So they have to make up stuff. They have to make up a white God. They have to make up a white Jesus. They have to make Superman. They have to make Gokus and stuff like that. Because in reality, they're not that great. But they have to indoctrinate themselves. They have to trick themselves into believing that they're great. They have, to trick, they have to trick other people into believing that they're great. This is why they make all this bullshit, and this is why they get so offended when their reality is interrupted. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is why they get so offended when their fantasy is interrupted by reality, okay? This is why they get upset when they see stuff like this. This is why they get upset when Nick Cannon says that Black people are anti-Semitic because we are the real Hebrews. This is why they get upset. Because their fantasy has been disrupted by reality. And they hate that. They love living in their fantasy. Most of their history is fantasy. There are several good books out there that tells you. That tells you that most of this Roman and Greek history fabricated. Fabricated in the 1500s very good books out there and I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a lot of this stuff I'm talking about I'm gonna be talking about in my documentary that I'm making but fabricated and I'm gonna show you guys sources too but a lot of this stuff fabricated made up this is why they love prancing around their, their, their Greek and Roman history because they fabricated it they made it up they made it seem so great and it really wasn't most of their history is fake okay and a lot of this great history this great European history that they like to you know dangle in front of our faces as if they brought civilization to the world is actually quote-unquote black history <laughs> it's not theirs they went through Europe and whitewashed everything and I'm not saying that just to say it check out the books that Karimio has on his channels these are white people other white people let you know that they whitewashed your history whitewashed the world's history anything that was great white people came and snatched and said hey we did it we made it but in actuality they didn't but let me tell you this white people did not come into power until the 1700s until the revolutionary war this is when white people came into power they haven't even been in power for they haven't even been in power for over 200 years i mean they haven't been in power for over 300 years They've been in power for less than 250 years. But they will have you to believe that, they're, they, that they've been in power for thousands of years. That they have been elite humans for thousands of years. That the Greeks, the Romans, the Egyptians, even the Israelites was them. Hell, they will even tell you that the Indians were them. You know how many white people claim to be Indian? 
not knowing that the Indians that they're claiming to be are the, the niggers that they don't like, right? But they claim to be anyone who they see as being great. America and uh, Napoleon were the reason why white people got into power. What Napoleon was doing, he was trying to expel all the black people out of Europe. All the black nobility out of Europe. And trying to place his white family members. Remember, Napoleon was not part of royalty at all. Remember, he came from a very poor family. And he worked his way through the military because he, he joined military school when he was real young. And he worked his way all the way up and became the emperor. Basically the emperor of France. And then he started establishing his family members to different parts of, of, of Europe. And, and uh, yeah, so he started establishing a lot of his family members to different parts of Europe. Of course, he aligned with the United States. The United States helped them out. And they helped the United States get their independence. And after that, they started to, um, they started to establish white families all around Europe. And this was around the 1700s. So a lot of these people who claim that they have that they're they're part of their royalty or nobility, a lot of those people who claim that aren't even part blood, they're not even blood related to the true royal families of Europe. I'm telling you, there's books out there that you guys need to read that will tell you all of this. That the original inhabitants of Europe were short black people. Okay? They were the ones who built these civilizations. And there were even black, other black people who weren't originally from Europe that moved in to different parts of Europe and brought in culture and all this other stuff that wasn't there before. So yeah, don't let these, these people lie to you. Do your research, study history, get true history. Don't listen to the crap that these people tell you because they're going to keep feeding you lies. I don't understand why... See. I don't understand why everybody believes status quo. I don't get that. Even people who call themselves Hebrew Israelites, they believe the status quo. I don't believe the status quo because I know that the status quo is where a bunch of white people who hate us came together and was like, this is going to be the standard. I don't do that. I deal with white people who are independent researchers and who go against the grain because some of them want the truth to come out. For example, BYU, Brigham Young University. A lot of people, I respect that organization because they do their own independent researchers. I mean, they do their own independent research and they fund independent researchers to pull out truth. They have done a lot of good for us to get understanding of our past here in the United States or in the Americas, you know. Um, of course, that's a little offshoot of the Mormons, but it's not intentionally done. They just want the truth for, so they can know the truth, but they also at the same time are inadvertently helping us, you know, so, but I don't trust the status quo. I don't trust the standard. I like to do my research and listen to these people who are actually out in the field putting in work and, you know, where I can get multiple people saying the same thing. I love it. But yeah, so anyways, I'm going to continue with this article. So, Samson wasn't a black man, but I'm glad the actor was by Lawson Stone. Okay, so he, he's not going to prove, I'm not going to read this whole article, but he does not prove anything. So he says, the History Channel's episode featuring Samson totally freaked out a lot of viewers when Samson appeared portrayed by an actor of African ancestry wearing dreadlocks. Of course, it's going to freak out white people. Like I said before, when they found out that Ren, a fictional character, <laughs> a fictional character was being played by a black guy, they flipped their lids, man. And that's just, that's so weird. I mean, it's a fictional, who cares? About Obviously, white people do, because like I said before, they do not like when their fantasy is disturbed at all. They don't like it. Because we know what reality is. We know that we are more superior than the reality. We are the true Superman. They are the average citizens that needs to be saved. 
okay? And they didn't like to admit that they are where they are because of us. Anyways, continue reading. It says, when I announced that I plan to offer a defense of the portrayal from a historical perspective, one person actually wished me luck in making a racist, sensible, and acceptable. Uh, making the racist sensible and acceptable. So, somebody thinks that this is racist because they have a, a, a quote-unquote black man playing the role of Samson, who was in actuality a what you would call today a quote-unquote black man. <sighs> I'm still trying to decide if he wasn't, if he was insulting the History Channel or me. <laughs> uh, both. He's probably trying to insult both. Okay. I doubt that racism motivated the History Channel in casting a black actor. Surely, an army of consultants and diversity sensitivity specialists vet every show uh, the most accurate criticism might be that the producers attempted to insert ethnic diversity because it was a political uh, because it was politically correct even if it was not historically wrong I mean even if it was historically wrong how what proof do you have that this is historically wrong because when you dig back in history when you pull up, you know, these artifacts, these wall, these temple paintings and stuff like that, you see, quote unquote, black people. Okay. So, what what are you talking about? It's not historically that it's historically wrong. <laughs> I'll read that to you guys again. The most accurate criticism might be that the producers attempted to insert ethnic that sorry ethnic diversity because it was politically correct even if it was historically wrong so anyways y'all can read the rest of this article yourself it's on seabed um, and like I said and this this does not explain anything about they go into the the origins of uh, Samson and him being a Danite and stuff like that but they don't prove anything that he was or was not black they just say that He's definitely not black, but we're not saying what he is. <laughs> we're not saying that he, he's a white guy or not a white guy or whatever, but he's def he definitely wasn't black, though. He wasn't black. We know that for sure, even though we didn't prove anything. Yeah, that's how they work, guys. So, own who we are. Don't be afraid to own who we were. I mean, but, you know. I, you know, I'm mad that they, they're talking about his skin color, but they're not talking about how he, he has more than seven locks. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Because, well, let me tell you one thing that's accurate. His skin complexion is what's accurate to the scriptures. His hair isn't. <coughs> because, like I said before, like I showed before, locks meant braids, and then he has seven of them. He probably had a much bigger beard, too. But yeah, this guy is a Hamai actor. I saw, I seen him in Game of Thrones and a few other flicks. Or oh, he's at least perceived to be a Hamai. Who knows what he really is? Um, but anyways, guys, that's basically all I have to say. Um, you know, Esau—they're just ridiculous. They're always going to be like that. That's why it's good for us to own who we are and not to be afraid of who we are. Look. My wife, she brought me a few shirts recently. She just got me one a few days ago. Um, but I have a shirt that has a Russian icon with Yahweh Shai and his apostles, right? And then she got me another shirt that says True Hebrew on it. Uh, it's a red shirt. I believe it's a red shirt. And it says True Hebrew on it. And then she got me another shirt that says Israelite by blood. See? We have to take our identity and we have to own it and not be afraid to own it. I wear my shirts in confidence that if anybody comes at me, I can correct them immediately and not be afraid to do it. Somebody's like, oh, you need to take your shirt off. That's anti-Semitic. Okay, prove to me how I'm anti-Semitic. Why do I need to take my shirt off? Because it's racist and anti-Semitic, and, and you're not a true Hebrew. Hmm. So you know, you know me, right? 
you know who I am. You know that I'm genetically not connected to Hebrews. I'm like, uh, uh, wait, so what made you think that I was an Israelite? Was it because my physical look? Wait, are you, are you Jewish? Oh yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm Jewish. Oh, okay, so because I don't look like you, I'm not an Israelite? When in the scripture it says that Yahweh Shai was darker than me, but you're lighter than me. What What's going on? See, I can, <laughs> and then we can go, we can rip open scripture and all this, and I slay that person right then and there. You know what I'm saying? So we have to wear our stuff with confidence. We have to know who we are. We have to be confident in who we are and not backpedal. Because, look, if Nick Cannon really did apologize, because it's alleged, we haven't seen anything. At least I haven't seen anything. If he really did backpedal like the one brother who, who literally came out and apologized, the football player, you don't have confidence in the Most High. You don't have faith in the Most High. You don't have faith or confidence in what you're, you're spewing out your mouth. I don't like people like that. I don't. I despise people like that. Because it shows me that you're selfish. You know, people like Tariq now, she was like, oh, man, that's a good move he did. That's a power move. I'm like, what? I'm like, how is that a power move when he has no power? Because he's trying to save his reputation and his money. That's a power move? Tariq is a very silly Negro. He really is. My, you know, it's funny because I've been watching Tariq for probably about like seven years. I've been watching him. I've been watching him since like 2000 and I want to say probably like 2000 and 12 or 13 something like that it's been a while um yeah i've been watching till, since like 2012 or 2013 i've been watching him and you know i stopped i'll probably say over the past like two years i really haven't watched him as much as i do but i introduced him to my wife i introduced his videos to my wife and my wife watches him almost religiously you know and it's almost kind of annoying because the brother is so fucking vain and carnal. I don't really want my wife watching him like that. But he does talk about some good things. He does bring some good subjects t to light. You know, things that black people need to know and stuff like that. But the guy is very, very carnal. He believes that black women should exploit their own bodies for money and for a come up and stuff like that. Which gives me, which makes me believe. You know, it gives somewhat validity to the allegations against him that he was a pimp and stuff like that in his past. Um, but very carnal dude. Very carnal. Very ungodly man. Um, but like I said, I watch him sometimes because he does bring out some things that are accurate at times, you know, and that I agree with. But, you know, for him to say that Nick Cannon did a power move because he reneged on what he said because he wanted to keep his money and his fame that's not a power move when somebody grabs you by the balls and you have to be like okay 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 i give up or i'm sorry that's not a place of power the person who has the power is the one who has your balls in their hands and gripping it and forcing you to submit that's the power move <laughs> and i'm sorry for using that analogy but you know but it is what it is so yeah, no, that was not a power move. That was a, a cowardly move. Because a power move is somebody grab you by your stuff and you whoop their ass and tell them you ain't having that. You know, if it's true what Nick Cannon said, if he really did apologize, he doesn't, the Most High is not going to deal with him. And the Most High hasn't been dealing with him this whole time. Because his brother, he'd be dealing with all types of people. You know what I'm saying? He has more Muslim people on his show than he does. Uh, and I'm talking about faith. Muslim faith people on his show than he does. People who call themselves Israelites. At least from what I've seen. You know, why Why hasn't he invited any of the brothers from IUIC up there? Or any of the brothers from any other camp up there? You know, not that I really mess with those brothers all like that anymore. But... You know, they're the ones who are most active. Why why aren't you inviting them up there to your show to spread that truth? I 
And he could have easily defended himself and backed up what he was saying, but he, he didn't. See, you can't serve mammon and, and the most high Yahweh at the same time. You, you just can't. You either love one or hate the other. You know, I was watching a video, I think it was of IUI. No, 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 no. It was with Tahar. It was with the brother Tahar from, um, I forget what his organization is called. It's been years. I used to watch Tahar all the time, man. Oh, sorry, sorry, not Tahar, sorry. Zabak. <laughs> Tahar is from um, GMS, but Zabak. My brother Zabak. Um, I used to watch him all the time. And I, I watched a video of his uh, a week ago that he did when he was in D.C. And there was a brother who came across him who was of means, okay? Just like uh, with, with, you know, Yahweh Shine. Remember when the brother came across and he was like, yo, you know, I want to be a follower of yours. What should I do? And Yahweh Shai told him, you know, get rid of all your wealth. Give it to our people. Give it to the needy and stuff like that. And come and join me. That's basically what Zabak told that brother too. You know, I don't, I don't think he ever put the scripture out, but he was about to get to it. But then he got distracted or whatever. But yeah, you know, Nick Cannon, he's the same way. He's not willing to get rid of his riches to join the Most High's army. So, I don't trust people like him. You know, before this whole this whole situation happened of this anti-Semitism, I was telling my wife, I don't trust people. It was fun, so funny because a week or two before these allegations came out about the one brother who played football and then Nick Cannon, I was telling my wife, I don't trust celebrity Hebrew Israelites. I don't trust them because they're rich I don't trust them because they're rich and a lot of them love their money more than they do the most high and I named Nick Cannon to my wife I was like I don't like I know Nick Cannon is one of them but I don't trust him and now he showed me if those allegations are true he showed me that he cannot be trusted but also I don't trust him even still because he hasn't came out and said anything about it he should at least be saying like well I didn't apologize or he should at least be saying something, but he's staying low to protect himself. You know what I'm saying? He should at least be talking to someone, telling somebody something, whether or not he said it or not. You know? Because if he really cared about the Most High, he would have stood up like, nope, I'm standing by my word. Whether you like it or not. But he didn't do that. But anyways, guys, so I'm up out of here. I will be talking to you guys later. Y'all guys stay safe out there. You know, keep praying for the brethren. Keep praying for our people. You know, that the Most High will pull us up out of this situation real soon. Because I've seen so many people, of our people, homeless. You know what I'm saying? And begging for money and stuff. And it, it hurts, man. It really does to see our people like that. You know, I can't wait till we get restored to our, our former glory. So that we can... You know, I don't even even know if I want to say former glory because we were we we were never as great as we're going to be. So I can't wait till we get established in our rightful place, so that we can bring peace to this world. Like I said, man, you you know it's got to be one hell of a thing for the birds for the animals and the, the plants to rejoice when we come into power you know that's a good thing if they're rejoicing so anyways guys that's all I have to say I will talk to you guys later peace out shalom and I pray that the most high bless you all shalom